Hi there, Televate here, and if you're checking out this video, you're probably fairly new to Runeterra, or maybe even just considering trying it out. If so, I definitely think you should give it a go. If you're a big fan of card games, you'll absolutely love this game. I know I do. I put together this video as a sort of tutorial for the game to cover all the basics. There are tutorials in the game, but I feel like they're not the best, and they can be quite long to get through, and I've tried to condense all this information into a fairly short video. Also, I've included a few of my own tips, so hopefully some of these will help you out. Legends of Runeterra is the card game produced by Varric Games, most famous for their game League of Legends, I'm sure you've heard of it. In this game, you play 1 vs 1, and both players have a nexus with 20 health, and the objective is to bring your opponent's nexus to 0, and in this game it's important to note, every little bit of order matters, as even though you may kill each other on the same stack, killing your opponent earlier in the stack matters, and I'll get onto what I mean by the stack later on. In the game, both players have a deck, which consists of 40 cards, made up by at most 2 regions, and each region has its own unique theme, so Demacia is more of a unit combat based deck, Noxus is all about dealing direct damage to the Nexus, Freylord is more about stalling and building up to play big units, Hilter of Zorn is a very spell heavy region, focused on using damaging spells for both Nexus and removal. Ionia can be best described as the Nope region, its main focus is just stopping your opponent from being able to do whatever their game plan is. There's two very extremes with Shadow Wilds, a very aggressive sort of self-killing archetype and a very slow healing archetype. Bilgewater is a very varied region and I can't really pinpoint how it's unique but it just feels unique. But it's hard to describe it in a short sentence, I'll just say it's mostly focused around what's called the plunder mechanic and I'll go into this mechanic later on. And Targon as a region is focused more on buffing and the invoke mechanic, again I'll cover these mechanics later on. So in your deck of 40 cards you can have up to 6 champion cards. And champions typically offer very interesting win conditions if you meet the requirements to level them up. One such example is Meikai, who when he levels up, he mills your opponent's deck, bringing them down to only 4 cards and none of them are the champion cards. A few of the champs don't really have that big win condition, but are just solid units and good inclusions to the deck, which is why you're only limited to 6, because in general, champions are stronger than the other cards in the deck. And because they're so strong, you cannot play more than one copy of a champion, you can use cards to effectively cheat out multiple copies of champions, but if you play a champion and have a second copy of that champion in your hand, your copy in hand will turn into that champion's signature spell, and this is just a spell which just exists as its own card in the game. So covering a bit more gameplay, each card requires mana to play, and you can see their cost in the top left of the card. Each player starts off with one mana at the game, and your total mana increases by one and refills at the end of each round. An interesting mechanic Runeterra has is spell mana, so up to 3 mana can be banked into the next turn, but this mana can only be used on spells. So if you didn't use any of your mana on turn 1, that 1 mana will go into your spell mana, so you would have 2 mana plus 1 spell mana to use on turn 2. If you use no mana on turn 2 as well, then that 2 mana becomes spell mana as well, so you would have 3 spell mana and 3 mana to use on turn 3. In general, there are 2 types of cards in the game, which are unit cards and spell cards. Spell cards just have a mana cost, and if you have enough mana to play them, you use that mana and the spell effect goes ahead. Unit cards also have an attack stat and a health stat, so any damage done to a unit is done to its health, and when the health of the unit reaches zero, it's killed and removed from the board. There is also a third type of card which they've introduced recently called landmarks, and these are a lot like units, but they have no stats, and instead they have a continuous effect which happens once per round, usually this is at round start or round end. So in the game you have rounds, which consist of multiple turns, where you and your opponent take it in turns to do action. In your turn, you can do six different actions, and some of these actions pass the turn to your opponent. Three of these potential actions are all using spells. Spells have three different speeds they can be used at, which are burst, fast, and slow. Burst spells resolve instantly and don't pass the turn onto your opponent, so you can do another action after using a burst spell. Fast spells you can play multiple of in one turn, but it gives your opponent a chance to respond before it finishes, and after the spell resolves, it passes the turn to your opposition. Slow is very similar to fast spells, but you have the restriction of you can only play one slow spell a turn, and you can't use slow spells during combat or as a response to anything your opponent does. So with these spells, you often build up a stack, which you'll see in the middle of the board, and you'll have all these circles next to each other, and when both players pass, saying they don't want to add anything more to the stack, the stack will resolve, and it will resolve in the opposite order that you play them in, so that will be left to right when you see it as the stack builds up from right to left. The other actions don't involve spells, so you can play a unit, and playing a unit puts the unit down on the board and it instantly passes the turn to your opposition. Some units have a play skill, 
and these skill effects are very similar to fast spells that your opponent gets a chance to respond. If you want to be able to tell whether it's something your opponent can respond to, you need to look for this yellow circle in the unit. If it has that yellow circuit, it means it acts like a fast spell and gives your opponent a chance to respond before it resolves. One thing to note with units is you can only have six units on the board, and if you want to play a seventh unit, you can choose to get rid of one of your units to make space for it, but you do have this restriction on how wide your board can get. Another action you can do is pass, and this is just a do nothing, and when both players consecutively pass, it moves on to the next round, which is when your mana will increase by one and your mana bars will refill. The final action you can do is you can declare an attack, and declaring the attack requires you to have the attack token, and the attack token is used up once you declare it. There are certain cards which give you attack tokens, but in general, the attack token alternates between player each round. So if on round one, I have the attack token, round two, my opponent will have the attack token, and on round three, I'll have the attack token again. So it means every other round, it's your chance to declare an attack. So to declare an attack, all you do is you drag out your units into the middle of the board, and that declares those units you've dragged out to attack, but you cannot pick what units they attack unless you have certain keywords which allow you to do that. Then after that happens, your opponent gets to decide which units to block with. Any units in combat with each other will then deal their attack to the opposing unit's health. Any unblocked units will deal damage directly to your opponent's nexus. But it's important to note that if your opponent blocks a unit and then you use a spell to kill that unit before the attack, the unit will still be blocked by what's called a phantom blocker and the attacker will not damage the nexus. This makes a lot of low statted units quite good in this game and a lot of people refer to them as chump blockers their purpose is to be a low stat unit which gives them some value in some other way and then they can use them to block one of your big attackers coming in so this sort of covers the basics of the game but i wanted to go over some card terminology and how different effects interact with each other as some of them can be a bit unintuitive so starting off with the terminology around cards which target nexus Usually the card will say it can target Nexus or either that it can target anything. So something like Unspeakable Horror specifically says it can target anything, whereas Vile Feast can only target units. A lot of cards say they will either target the strongest or the weakest, and the way the game decides what's stronger and what weaker is it first compare the attack. So the highest attack is the strongest. If the attack is the same, it then looks at the health. So the highest health is the strongest. And then if the attack and health are the same, it will finally look at the cost. So the one with the highest cost is the strongest. And if all of that is the same, it will then pick the one which is left most on the board. So in the game, when you play units, there's a big difference between playing and summoning. So when you play a card, that means specifically playing it from your hand. If a card's being summoned, that's usually from another effect which pulls it out. So something like Rekindler summons a champion, but it doesn't play it. So its play effect would not trigger if it had one. So in the game with various buff cards, it's important to note that these do not remove a damaged state. So there are cards which will kill a damaged unit and you might be sitting there going, oh, I've got this card which increases its health by two and that will bring it back to full health. But if it's a buff card and not a healing card, it won't remove the damaged state and that unit will still be considered damaged. Also looking at buffs, there's a big difference between the term give and grant in this game. So give is considered temporary and grant is considered permanent, so will last over multiple rounds. So looking at some of the keywords in the game, and these are all the things that make the game less vanilla and a bit more interesting and not just having units smash faces against each other endlessly. And the game's quite good because a lot of the game you can already learn about when you play the game. So if you right click on a card and hover over the keyword, the game will explain what it does. So I definitely recommend doing that a lot when you're starting out. So I've divided the keywords into three main areas and there are a lot of grey areas in each of these categories so you could argue where they sit but I just wanted to split up because there's a fair few and to make it a bit more easily digestible. So starting off I'm doing effects which don't directly have a target so that don't target units on the board or cards they're just under certain conditions this effect will trigger really. So allegiance, the allegiance effect will trigger if the card on top of your deck is from the same region as the card with the allegiance effect. This incentivizes making a mono region deck. In a lot of these mono decks, it's still very common for people to splash three to six cards from another region. Behold triggers an effect if you have the specific card it refers to in hand or on the board. So a lot of these behold cards are behold an eight or more cost. If you have an eight or more cost in your hand or on the board, then its effect will trigger. Thunder effects will trigger when you've damaged your opponent's nexus that round. Daybreak effects trigger when this card is the first you play them around. 
or if you have a Ravoon on the board, which makes it always daytime. And Nightfall is the complete opposite and is an effect which activates when the card is not the first played in the round. And this is really similar to the combo keyword in Hearthstone. Enlightened is a special effect which triggers when you have 10 total mana, such as Karma who levels up once you're enlightened. Invoke allows you to select a card from a pool of celestial cards and you get three options. This is similar to discovering Hearthstone apart from you have a very limited pool of what cards you get to pick from and all the celestial cards are slightly overpowered which is why all the invoke cards are slightly understated and attune and honestly I have no idea why this is a keyword. All it is is you gain one spell mana when it's played on the board. And the last keyword in this category is rally and all rally does is give you an attack token one thing to note is you can't have multiple attack tokens. So if you already have an attack token and then play a rally effect, you don't get two attack tokens. It just replaces your existing one. So what you want to do with rally effects is attack in to use your attack token and then rally to get another attack token. So the next category I kind of considered are generally keywords which are linked to spells and are more focused on targeting either cards on the board or cards in your hand. So to start off obliterate, this is effectively the same as killing a unit apart from no effects trigger on the killed unit. So there's effects which trigger when units die, and this just mitigates that. The unit isn't considered dead, it is just removed from the game completely. Silence removes buffs and effects from the units, and a really interesting interaction with this is it can also remove the damage state on some units. If you have a unit, say Draven, who's typically at free health, and he was damaged, but then buffed up above free health, he would still have that damage state. But if you silence him, bring him back to free free, he is no longer considered damage and that's a very weird interaction and you can use that to get around these cards which kill units which are damaged. It's a very niche situation but it comes up more than you'd expect. Frostbite effect brings a unit's attack to zero. One thing to note is units with zero attack cannot strike so there are various cards which are like when I strike or I strike my opponent and then this effect happens because the strike doesn't happen the effect doesn't happen. Stun will stop a unit from being able to attack or block. And one thing to note is cards that cause units to strike, such as single combat, don't get stopped by stun. So stun only stops the attack and blocking phase. Any other spell cards still work on stunned units. Recall I mentioned briefly with Dragon's Rage, all this does is recall a card to its owner's hand. One good use of this is you can use it to fizzle spells. So if you, your opponent is using a spell on one of your units and you don't want its effect to go off, you can actually recall your own unit to stop that spell's effect happening. Discard is just removing a card directly from hand. And one thing to note is this doesn't count as killing the card. So cards which have effects on death don't trigger. So it's kind of similar to obliterating the card, but there are a few cards which have special effects when discarded. Similarly to discard, fleeting is a temporary card. And if you don't use it by the end of the round, the card is discarded. Finally, sort of related to discard is toss, and toss directly removes cards from your deck as opposed to your hand. And this is really for a specific archetype called deep, where your main focus is to make your deck size as small as possible to trigger the deep effect. And onto the biggest list of keywords is the unit effects. These usually just exist on units or can be applied to units with buffs. So first up, we've got Lifesteal and you've got Drain. Drain is effectively the spell equivalent of Lifesteal. When this unit does damage, you heal your Nexus by the amount of damage dealt. So one thing that's really important to notice is barriers that prevent damage, and I'll cover that in a moment, mean you do zero damage and therefore using Lifesteal on a barrier means you do not heal anything. We've got Challenger and Vulnerable. So Challenger means you can decide what unit blocks that attacking unit so you can use that to control your opponent's blocking and vulnerables kind of like the opposite where if a unit is vulnerable then you can decide where that unit blocks regeneration just means the unit's health restores to full at the end of each round tough reduces damage from all sources by one and this is really strong when combined with health buffs or healing card support triggers a special effect on the unit to the right of the attacking unit barrier means the next source of damage on a unit is mitigated. One thing to note is typically barriers only last one round and there is an interesting reaction with the overwhelm keyword which I'll get onto in a second. Spell shield is like barrier but with only spells so the next spell used on this card is mitigated. 
Overwhelm means that any excess damage your unit does when attacking is done to your opponent's nexus. One thing to note is this idea of phantom blocking doesn't work. So if they've got a phantom block, then your unit will deal full damage to the nexus if it has overwhelm. And also it's important to note that barrier doesn't stop overwhelm damage. And I know this is one a lot of new players will get caught out of. Fearsome units can only be blocked by units of three attack or more. Elusive units can only be blocked by other elusive units or if they have effects which allow them to block elusive units. Quick attack is an effect which only triggers when attacking. It means that unit strikes first before the unit that is blocking can strike it. This allows you to get multiple value trades in. Last breath triggers a special effect when the unit is killed. Ephemeral means the unit dies after striking or at the end of the round. Fury, which is typically a keyword restricted to the dragon archetype, means when that unit kills a unit and lives, it gains one attack and one health. Deep, which is restricted to the sea monster archetype, means that when you have 15 or less cards in your deck, all your cards with deep get plus three attack and plus three health. Scout means that the first time in a round your scout units attack only, you get your attack token back. So this means effectively your scout units can attack twice. But I've seen a lot of people understand this a bit wrong. So it only can occur once a round and only scout units can be attacking for it to happen. So if you attack with some scout units and some non-scout units, you don't get the attack token back. And one thing that's really important to know is if you attack with your scouts, then do a full attack with all your units and then use rally and then attack with your scouts again, you do not get the attack token back because you've already attacked with only scouts that round and it's already given you the attack token back for that. This should be a good starting point for the basics in Runeterra to start getting into games and building up your collection. If you want advice on how to get cards quickly in Runeterra, definitely check out my collection guide video. And for more weekly content on Runeterra, don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, thanks for watching and have a good day.